freedom, man. That's what it's all about. You've got to groove on freedom, like the good book says. Welcome. You are listening to What on Earth is Happening. This show will discuss the topics of human consciousness, mind control, natural law, the occult, and all issues that affect the freedom of the people of Earth. What on Earth is Happening will endeavor to shine light upon the darkness of our world and to offer empowering solutions to the problems we face as humanity approaches its critical moment of choice. And now, here is your host, Mark Passio. Welcome one and all, you're listening to What on Earth is Happening. I'm your host, Mark Passio. Today is Monday, December 7th, 2015, and I'm back from a long hiatus. My last podcast was back in April of 2015, April 18th to be exact. That's almost eight months ago. And, uh, you know, a whole lot has gone on since then uh, in my life and in the world, obviously. And I just wanted to come on and uh, ease back into things and uh, tell people a little bit about what I've been doing during my hiatus, some of my reasons for the hiatus, um, and uh, catch people up to date on some important happenings and things that are actually taking place. So let's jump right in and uh, and just tell people a little bit about why I took a break for uh, a while. Um, I was feeling pretty burnt out. I felt like... I needed some time for myself to do things for my uh, physical health and mental health and um, just really wanted to put the ball in some other people's court for a time and uh, just take some time that I needed and I did that and I'm going to attempt to come back in a podcast format, maybe eventually move it back to uh, some form of an internet radio network but for now uh, it's going to be in, in a podcast format once again. And I'm going to attempt to do this about once a week. That's going to be my goal. So um, hopefully these will be pretty regular. And um, I think it's uh, important that I keep people up to date, especially with the Free Your Mind conference coming up. Free Your Mind 4 is coming up uh, in April of 2016. I'm going to talk a little bit about that today as well. So, um, you know, I'm not a superhuman, folks, you know, contrary to what some people may think. Um, I need time for myself. I need to rejuvenate and recharge. Uh, I need to reflect upon things. Uh, I need to um, uh, figure out new ways that I want to approach this work and other things that I do. So um, that's that was my main reason for the podcast hiatus, for the radio show hiatus. Uh, I uh, left the um, uh, former network that I was on, Republic Broadcasting. And uh, I just want to kind of do this on my own without a network for the time being. Uh, I want to say a few things about, um, you know, how I want to approach things moving forward. For people who are familiar with me and my work, this shouldn't really come as too much of a shock. Uh, They kind of know my personality. They know that I'm straightforward, don't sugarcoat anything, but I really want to even move that into higher gear because with the events that are going on in the world and how things are very rapidly quickening in the move to um, bring people into totalitarianism and slavery, um, I really want to drop the pretense altogether uh, about, you know, kind of talking to people in any kind of a way that uh, placates them or uh, makes them not feel offended by, you know, what I have to say. I really want to bring out a little bit more of 
what I would consider my real personality, uh, how I would interact with friends just on an everyday basis and, you know, just really be more of who I really am, which is somebody that doesn't tolerate bullshit and doesn't placate bullshit and bullshitters to say it in very plain street language. Okay. Uh, And there's a whole lot of that going on in the world today. There's way too much of it. And there's way too many people that placate it. And because they're placating that, um, people don't understand that their behaviors are completely unacceptable and the things that they support are unacceptable. Uh, In other words, I want to make this radio show, if you will, even less politically correct than it ever has been before. Uh, And I want to really stick it to people who need it stuck to them, so to speak, you know, uh, who need to be completely told that what they're doing um, is not only asinine, not only destroying our culture, not only destroying our values, but ultimately leading us into a state of slavery from which we may never escape. And it's wrong. And that's the problem is so few people are willing to tell people that their behavior is wrong. So this is going to like, like moving forward, I want to make what I've been doing even more in your face and abrasive because, um, that's what I'm really like on a day to day basis. When I talk about these things, I'll just give a quick anecdote, you know, and I'm going to get into this a little bit later in the podcast, you know, the whole false flag uh, incidents that are taking place in the world recently. Like I said, like I've been saying, 2015 is the year of false flags. We've had more false flags this year than ever before. And it is starting this gun control debate in society. Uh, And, you know, I, I recently made someone so uncomfortable that they walked away from me in a, uh, in a pub Okay, because I was saying to a friend, I don't care what people want to talk about and debate on regarding gun control. There is no debate. And when I talk to somebody, when they bring up this issue and ask me what my take on it is, I immediately say, there is absolutely no debate. I don't want to have a debate because here's the bottom line. Are you going to come and try to take my guns from me? Because you'll be met with the front end of an AK-47 if you try it. And I said, so will any agent of the state who tries to do that. Period. The end of the debate. And that's, that should be the attitude of every American who values their freedom and wants to remain in any modicum of the, 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 the sense of the word free at all. So, you know, I'm going to get into talking about some of these false flag incidences, incidents later on the, the, sh- the, the program. So, I've done a lot of interviews uh, during the hiatus and uh, you can check all of those out. You know, I wasn't completely inactive uh, as far as the great work is concerned, although I've been busy with other aspects of the work, which I'm going to also get to. Um, There's many interviews that I did with many great radio talk show hosts and you could check that out on the news section of my website, whatonearthishappening.com. If you're a new listener, of course, I always recommend to people to go up to the podcast section of the site, the archives, and just uh, move forward in order from number one forward, because there's a progression of information there. A lot of people, you know, will look at my website and say, I don't know where to start. You know, if you read the home page, if you read the landing page, it tells you where to start, where I recommend that you start. I recommend that you start in the audio archive, the podcast section, and you go back to number one and you work your way forward in order at your own pace. Uh, it's building block material. Uh, there are prerequisites, you know, listening to the modern, uh, podcast, the, the later ones in the series is, you know, be, you shouldn't do that before you listen to the early ones because the information in the later ones has prerequisite material that you need to understand from the earlier podcast. So take them in order. If you're new, if you're a new listener and uh, move forward at your own pace. You'll get the maximum value from the information that I've shared by doing it that way. Uh, I want to say thank you to all the people who um, expressed concern for me during the hiatus. And, you know, just real real quickly, uh, you know, people uh, basically wrote to me and, and asked in many cases, 
are you okay? And the answer is, you know, no, not really. You know, it's some of the, it's something else I want to talk about. Um, I'm not okay. Um, I'm not okay emotionally. You know, physically, yes, I'm okay. You know, actually, physically, I'm in better shape than I've been in my life. I've really been uh, doing, uh, you know, in my personal life, a lot of uh, uh, physical activity, um, trying to stay as fit as possible and keep my health in as good shape as possible. Um, I've been, uh, um, you know, doing a lot of physical fitness work. Uh, I've been training in martial arts because uh, that's just as important as learning how to handle firearms uh, should it come to a situation where uh, self-defense is going to be required. Um, So uh, I've been studying the uh, martial art um, called Jeet Kune Do, which was Bruce Lee's system of martial arts uh, street fighting. And... um, that's been going really great. Um, I've been enjoying it immensely. It's it's been helping keeping me in, in decent shape, um, and uh, it keeps the mind sharp as well. Um, I've been um, doing uh, other activity in the form of music, which I'm going to get to, uh, and that's a really really big new thing for me. Uh, I've always been in, involved in music. I've always uh, been a vocalist and um, been involved in bands in the past, and uh, I'm going to tell everybody about my new project in this podcast. So uh, just to go back to, uh, you know, the thank yous that I was about to send out, um, a lot of people expressed a lot of support and concern for me during the hiatus, and, you know, while uh, I I totally appreciate that, I may, I've been fine physically, but the answer to a lot of those questions and concerns is, you know, I'm not, I wasn't okay emotionally and mentally in many cases uh, during that time because uh, a lot of things have been taking place in my personal life and just seeing the state of the world the way that it is um, and rapidly growing worse. I mean, things are growing more and more and more insane by the day. And it seems that less people are awake. It seems that people who seem to be awake are really not. It seems that the mind control was working uh, even more effectively on people and more people are television watchers and less people are readers. And there's just, there's so much going on in society that is absolutely tragically horrific. And I'm going to get into that as well today. Um, but I just want to say thank you for the concern because it's definitely appreciated and heartfelt. And, uh, I understand that, you know, a lot of care was sent my way during that time. So, uh, thank you for that. Thank you for people who, uh, um, helped support me in my personal life and in the work that I do by, uh, sending me gifts and donations. And, you know, that, that really helped me to keep going. Um, and just thanks for, you know, having the mindset that you do and being part of the fight for freedom. You know, that's more appreciated than anything else. So I uh, just wanted to say thanks to everybody for uh, showing their support during my time off. Um, just wanted to mention quickly before I get into the material for today uh, that there is a donation button on the What on Earth is Happening website. And for people who have found value in my work and want to uh, help to support the work that I do and I'm going to continue to do, um, you could uh, make a donation by uh, clicking that on uh, the left side of what on earth is happening.com, the donation button. Uh, with that said, I'll, I'll jump into some things that I want to talk about for today, like the Free Your Mind 4 conference. I mean, this is going to be the biggest conference by far of 2015 for anything having to do with events that are taking place in our world and truth being spoken regarding those events. Um, Free Your Mind is a conference on consciousness, mind control, and the occult. And it takes place now yearly in the Philadelphia area. It was bi-yearly. I founded this conference back in 2011 and set it up as a bi-yearly event, a bi-annual event uh, during the odd years. So we did one in 2011, in 2013, and in 2015. I turned it over to new uh, organizational um, members in, um, uh, I guess that was late Uh, 2014 because Free Your Mind 3 was under uh, new organizers and uh, they've done a phenomenal job with the event, made it uh, bigger than ever before. Uh, Free Your Mind 3 was by far the biggest event that uh, uh, was part of the Free Your Mind series and I'm sure Free Your Mind 4 will be even bigger. 
So the speaker lineup is just phenomenal already. Um, this is this um, conference is going to be taking place um, just outside of Philadelphia in Bucks County, Pennsylvania, uh, on April 15th, 16th, and 17th of next year, 2016. Uh, next year is just right around the corner. We're rapidly approaching the end of the year. It's amazing how fast 2015 flew by. And uh, the Free Your Mind 4 conference is going to be here before we know it. It's going to take place at the Sheraton Bucks County Hotel. Once again, the same venue that Free Your Mind 3 was held at, which was a phenomenal venue. Uh, The Sheraton Bucks County Hotel is located at 400 North Oxford Valley Road in Langhorne, Pennsylvania, just outside the city limits of Philadelphia. So here's the description of the event. Free Your Mind 4 returns to Philadelphia in 2016 with a three-day conference featuring top caliber whistleblowers and researchers from across the country who will shed light upon our world's problems and bring forward empowering solutions. Spreading awareness on the topics of consciousness, mind control, subversive occult influences, holistic mind-body-spirit health, and solution-oriented approaches to the problems humanity faces in these challenging times. That's what Free Your Mind has always been about and will continue to be about in the future. The speakers lined up for Free Your Mind 4 already, Bob Tuscan, Kathy O'Brien, David Whitehead, Freeman, Jamie Hanshaw, Jay Parker, Janice Barcello, Jim Mars, John Vibes, Jordan Maxwell, Josie the Outlaw Wales, Ken Rolla, Laura Eisenhower, myself, Mark Passio, Mark Phillips, Mary Sean Young, Max Egan, and Ross Ben. And more speakers are going to be announced soon. That is not the complete speaker lineup, but it is already a phenomenal lineup of speakers. The tickets for the Free Your Mind Conference have been on sale for months, and uh, an all-weekend pass is $169.99. Individual day passes, $59.99. You could visit the conference website for more information. The conference website is freeyourmindconference.com. Once again, freeyourmindconference.com, freeyourmind Four coming at us in April of 2016, April 15th, 16th, and 17th. Now, my personal presentation at the Free Your Mind 4 event is going to be a double presentation. Yes, I'm going to be giving actually a double presentation on over two nights. My presentation will be split over two days at the Free Your Mind 4 event. It will be on Saturday and Sunday. So that's Saturday, April 16th and Sunday, April 17th. And this two-part presentation that I'll be delivering will be entitled Neo-Feminism and the Satanic Epi-Eugenics Agenda. That is my topic over a two-night presentation for Free Your Mind 4, Neo-Feminism and the Satanic Epi-Eugenics Agenda. And that I'm going to go more in depth into this topic than I have before. I'm going to be talking about the war on men and therefore by proxy the war on women. I'm going to be talking about neo-feminism as a satanically inspired agenda. Uh, I'm going to be getting into how it is an example of eugenics. Uh, eugenics through waged through mind control, waged through social engineering and hence what I refer to as epi-eugenics. And, uh, you know, there's going to be a lot of detailed information in this presentation, and it's going to be uncomfortable information, information that many people don't want to hear. That's what I pride myself in doing, saying the things that other people won't say because they're a little bit timid, a little bit afraid. They want to be liked more than they want to tell the truth. They, you know, uh, don't want people to be offended. You know, they don't want to upset their delicate sensibilities. You know, well, like I've always said, and is the tagline for this show, get as offended as you like. And, uh, you know, if you don't want to be offended, don't show up for my presentations at Free Your Mind 4, because I'm going to say some hard things that many people are not going to want to hear. So it's going to be a 
very intense presentation and it's going to cut through all the BS and it's not going to, it's not going to hold back any punches. Let's put it that way. So you're going to uh, want to check that out at free your mind for over uh, two nights. So speaking of epigenics and neo-feminism, uh, I'm going to be getting into some anecdotes about incidents that I've uh, been through recently, uh, just in interaction through music, because of course, with, um, with a new band, you want to get out there and promote and you want to meet people in the music scene and you want to, uh, you know, meet venue owners and bookers and you have to really put yourself out there socially in order to promote a band properly. And that's one of the things I've been doing recently. So, uh, I want to tell people about my new music project. Uh, it's called the founders. That's the name of my new band, The Founders. And we are a we are an anarchist hardcore punk band. So for people who um, aren't too familiar with that genre of music, it's kind of a blending of the uh, punk rock, the old punk rock style, kind of from the uh, late 70s and uh, 80s uh, through into the early 90s. And it's it's kind of blended with a more hard and abrasive style of music called hardcore. So it's a faster and heavier form of old school punk rock known as hardcore punk. So it's taking punk and it's hardening it even more than its original um, stylings. And you're, you're putting more uh, heavy and abrasive lyrics into it um, with faster some faster beats. So... Um, you know, anybody who's around my age, around 40, probably would have heard this musical genre, heard of it, uh, if not actually be familiar with it. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's not your father's music. Let's put it that way. You know, it's, uh, it, this isn't music for old men wearing fedora hats. You know, uh, this is music for, you know, people who are into fast paced, fast moving, energetic music that is up and in your face and, you know, putting a message forward, specifically our style of um, this form of hardcore punk. So, you know, I grew up on stuff like this. This is stuff that I listened to when I was, you know, in my teens and early 20s, and uh, I still love it, you know. Um, I like heavy music. Uh, I mean, when people heard my, uh, you know, um, bumper music during the What on Earth is Happening radio show and podcast, you know, it's, it's mostly metal. Um, I think metal, punk, hardcore genres like that are the essence of rebellion. At least they were intended to be, you know, part of what we talk about in the founders is how that rebellion was sucked out of the music, you know, sucked out of those genres, sadly. And most people who are still in these you know, so-called heavy genres of music like metal, hardcore, and punk, they're not talking about anything, you know, they're just posers who are basically, you know, trying to be part of a scene, they're, they're trying to, you know, uh, forge an identity, you know, uh, th they think it's all about, you know, what they wear, how they style their hair, what tattoos they have, you know, what kind of people that they hang out with in the quote unquote scene, they're seamsters, you know, they're not, they're not interested in the message. They're not interested in rebellion, you know, and, and you know, another thing I'm just kind of tired of hearing when I bring up music is all these new agers who think, oh, all music has to be this, uh, you know, namby pamby fairy style, um, you know, what w f f woodland f flute music all the time or something, or, you know, playing the didgeridoo, you know, it's like, get over yourself. I mean, for real, Okay, you know, how old are you? Are you 90 years old? You know, because I'm not. You know, I, I want some energy in my music. And don't, don't give me this crap about, oh, it's just all about just vibration. There's more to music than just the vibrational tonality. And you know what? Sometimes you need an abrasive and discordant tonality to wake people up. Okay, sometimes they need to hear it that way. That's my style. It's always been my style. It's always going to be my style. I'm never going to hand it to you with the sugar cube, okay? So if you're expecting that, you're going to have a long, long wait. You know, so all the people that think, oh, a music is only this one thing and it's, oh, it's got to be so pleasing and pleasant and sweet and nice. It's like, 
whatever. You know, I understand the experiments with the Emoto water stuff. I get it. Understood. But you know what? I could be just as effective playing some hardcore punk music up on that stage and delivering a message through that than anybody can through whatever new age music or, you know, uh, relaxing, calm, soothing melodies that they, they can play. So, you know, I'm not really interested in hearing people's opinion on that. You can have your opinion on that. I'm going to write the music and play the music I want to write and play. Got it? Okay. So, you know, this isn't going to be for everybody. The Founders is not going to be for everybody. I fully understand that. You know, this is what, again, what I like. It's what I grew up on. I'm proud of this band, how it's coming out so far for as long as we've been around since, by the way, we were born on the 4th of July. Okay. You know, I was trying to put something together a little bit before that. It kind of wasn't working out. Uh, I had a little 4th of July uh, party here at my house. Uh, where we did uh, a, a cookout and a few friends showed up and we got to talking. I was telling them that, you know, the project I tried to put together wasn't really working. And, you know, they said, hey, we're, we're musicians. And, you know, we got together for some rehearsals after that and it went great. We really gelled well and, uh, you know, realized we were kind of on the same page about what we wanted to do musically. And, uh, you know, so far it's working out great. So, uh, this band was born on the 4th of July, which is amazing. I mean, an amazing synchronicity. And we publicly announced the band on September 11th. So kind of, uh, two very interesting synchronicities there. Um, I'll tell people a little bit about our upcoming show. And again, just to go back to this briefly, um, this band isn't going to be for everybody. I fully realize that. Not everybody's going to like the style. If you don't like the style, don't listen to it. Simple as that. Um, I tend to think the founders are going to be a band either people love or they hate. There's not really going to be much in between. You know, It's either you're kind of familiar with the genre, you kind of like it, you really like the message, you resonate with the message and the energy, or you don't. And I totally understand that's what it's going to be like. And you know what? I prefer it that way. That's how I prefer things. So we clearly know where we stand. You know, that's how I tend to be in my personality. That's how I tend to be in my life. And why should it be any different in my music? So uh, check out my band, The Founders. Our website is thefounders.us. Thefounders.us. That'll take you right now to our Facebook page. We're probably going to have a full website under construction soon. But for now, uh, we have a Facebook page uh, for the band with photos up there. And uh, you could check out some videos. Of course, uh, we don't have a demo recorded yet. We'll probably be going into the studio to record a demo very soon. Um, we're going to be playing live, though. We played a preview show where we played a couple of songs at an open mic night. Uh, back in October, but um, we're going to be playing our first full show with some other great bands uh, coming up this week. I know it's very short notice for people who are listening to the to the radio show right now, but if you are in the Philly area and you want to come out and check out my band, The Founders, we'd love to uh, see you out there live. We're going to be playing this Thursday, December 10th, 2015, with uh, three other awesome bands, Custom Power Ride, Beards and Whiskey, and Concord Road. This will be taking place, this show will be taking place at Connie's Rick Rack. Connie's Rick Rack is a, uh, you know, popular original uh, band music venue uh, that's uh, located right here in South Philadelphia uh, in the Italian market section of South Philly, uh, which is my neighborhood. I mean, I, I, you know, when I usually go there to check out some bands, I walk over there. It's right near my house. So, um, you know, this is, you know, right in my uh, neighborhood that I grew up in. So uh, Connie's Rick Rack is at 1132 South 9th Street in Philadelphia. Um, again, this is this Thursday, December 10th. Uh, the Founders, uh, Philly's newest anarchist, hardcore punk, revolutionary band, and we're playing with Custom Power Ride, Beards and Whiskey, and Concord Road, three other great bands. 
Uh, it's ten dollars admission for the show. The show is twenty one and over to uh, go in because there it is a bar and there's alcohol served, and um, uh, the doors will open at eight p.m. this Thursday night, and the show will begin at nine p.m. The first band will start playing at nine p.m. So for more information on the founders, check out our website, thefounders.us. Um, that's you know, one of the things I've been doing and you know what, we're bringing a very serious, uh, upfront message about freedom with this band. That's what the lyrics are all about. The lyrics are all about ending tyranny, ending slavery, ending mind control, you know, um, uh, talking about a lot of the negative elements that are taking place in society, you know, uh, it's freedom oriented music. It's music that is exposing the dark new world order agenda. It's, um, music that is talking about what we need to do to get, um, our minds right. And, um, you know, start fighting back against this tyranny. So, um, that's what the founders talks about. Our, you know, our songs again are, are up in your face, you know, um, very simple language and, you know, it, it's abrasive. And again, like I said, it's not going to be for everybody, for people that enjoy energetic in your face music, though, they're going to love it for people who don't like that kind of music. You're not going to be into it. So, you know, don't listen to it and complain about what I want to do musically. Uh, if you don't want to do music like this, form your own musical outfit and do whatever kind of music you like and, and put a message forward with it. Just like if people don't like how I deliver the truth, then, uh, you know, get your own radio show or do your own video or host your own conference or, you know, um, you know, do your own presentations, you know, and this is kind of like what I want to transition into talking about. There's so much infighting in the whole truth community and nitpicking and people just, um, constantly trying to say, Oh, this person's a shill because he talks about this, or this person's a shill because he doesn't talk about this. And meanwhile, these people are basically doing nothing but complaining. You know, I've talked about this before, and it's going on worse than ever. A lot of, in a lot of ways, I think these people may be paid disinfo agents just to spread, uh, you know, division within the scene, within the truth-telling community. And, uh, you know, you often look at people who complain about things like this and complain about certain people who are doing something, and you look up what they're doing, and the answer is always nothing. They're doing nothing. You know, which is why I want to say I, I really do appreciate a lot of the people who have stepped up and started doing their own podcast, started doing their own radio show, um, started making their own presentations. You know, I see a new crop of truth warriors out there who are really doing the great work, and it's it's really encouraging to see. You know, I, I like to think that maybe my work helped you know uh, influence some of that and other um, pioneers in the, this whole community really helped influence that, you know, as they say, you know, if we've seen farther, it is because we are standing upon the shoulders of giants. I look at it like that as well for myself. If people who came before me in, in doing this work and putting this information forward, didn't do what they did to the effective level that they did it and the proliferous level that they did it, I wouldn't know what I know. And I wouldn't be able to do the work that I have done. So, you know, um, it's good to see that it's continuing forward and people are taking the ball and rolling with it. And I think more of that needs to be done. I think we need to have less infighting and people need to unite on the one front of freedom. And we could sort out all the differences later, you know. Um, I do want to talk about my view of modern society and my take on the whole getting this done through consciousness aspect where I previously really had a very positive outlook towards some of this stuff. Uh, my outlook is be becoming decidedly darker when it comes to our ability collectively as people who are trying to expose the truth to quote unquote, wake the sleeping masses and get this transformation um, in humanity accomplished in consciousness, or in other words, um, breaking human slavery, breaking the chains of human slavery through consciousness alone. I am at the point where I do not believe 
personally any longer that it will be done that way. And I'm just being honest, you know, I'm, I'm being honest about where I stand, you know, in my analysis of the situation that we're in. I think things have grown dramatically worse. I think people are more asleep than ever. I, again, I don't know where people who have a positive attitude live or where they're coming from or what they're seeing. It's almost like we live on different planets because anybody who has a positive outlook about people waking up, I think they hang out with too many people who are very awake and they don't understand how outnumbered people like that are. So they're seeing the world through rose colored glasses, so to speak. They think everybody is like them because I feel they're leading a sheltered life. They're leading a sheltered existence. They're only surrounding themselves with people who are of like minds and they don't venture out into the world to see what's out there. They don't venture out into society very much. In many cases, they're, you know, they'll, they'll sit behind the keyboard all day talking to people who are like them or they'll hang in their houses or in their friends' houses with people who are like them. And then they develop this mindset, wow, everybody's waking up because the people I deal with every, on a daily basis, they're, they're pretty awake. It's a very, very naive mindset to work yourself into. Because, I mean, when I go out into the public, into society on a daily basis, I see what's out there. And I'm telling you, it is mindless golems out there that have absolutely no idea about one thing that is happening. You could not bring up one topic of truth, one topic of anything that is of significance to human freedom. And these people have not looked into one iota of it, not one microscopic aspect of it. They're closed minded. They're ignorant on every aspect of what's going on in life. All they know is what the television tells them. You know, they are absolutely shut down and don't care. That's the thing. Not only are they dumb and completely ignorant, they don't care about how dumb and ignorant they are. I mean, these people are just they are the perfect slave. They are the perfect mind control slave. They love it the way it is in many cases. Absolutely love it the way that it is. Totally identified with money, totally identified with career, totally identified with the state. And they want all of that to continue unabated, unchallenged, because that's their comfort. I'm comfortable in my slavery is their mental attitude. Oh, I... You know, if it's slavery and this is slavery, well, it's not so bad. I actually got an email from a golem like this that said, if this is slavery, well, then slavery isn't so bad. Why are you so angry? What makes you, what makes you so uncomfortable with the world the way that it is? I mean, you have to be an absolute child to think that way. I mean, it's not, it, stuff like that doesn't even make me mad or upset. It makes me profoundly sad that cultural engineers, social engineers are capable of making a human being into that, putting a human being into that mental, emotional, and spiritual condition. It's almost an unfathomable thing. I, I could not have believed it years and years ago until I understand the depth of what was really taking place in our world. Now that I understand the depth of social engineering, epigenetics, mind control, you know, I I realize that these social engineers have accomplished something that is a miracle. It's a miraculous situation that they could take a, a human being with actual potential and turn them into a mindless golem robot that doesn't care about their own freedom, let alone anyone else's. It's pathetically sad. These people aren't human beings. I don't know what they are, but a human being is not one of them. They're not even close to being a human being. Not by my definition of what a human being is and the qualities a human being has. Not even close. So my take on the ability of people who are awake 
to awaken the masses and get it done through consciousness is, and has for actually quite some time been very dark. I personally think this is going to come to war. I've, I've stated this in some interviews and I'm just going to come out and say it openly, especially now with all the false flag events with the communist, the, the rabid communist who is leading the charge from the puppet actor position of pre- puppetant president in the, in the white house right now with the, the new ne- neo, uh, liberal and communist and neocon and fascist, uh, you know, puppets that are on the way in whoever it may be, doesn't make a difference who gets in, you know, government will still be the ruler because people have elected masters. Um, I don't think that this is going to be done by convincing people of the difference between right and wrong behavior and that government is violence and slavery. I think it's going to have to happen through, through bloodshed, through forceful revolution. And I went into, in my last podcast, why people are so psychologically afraid of that. The main, the real answer is because they are absolute cowards and they wouldn't fight for anything, let alone their own freedom. They don't care about themselves. They ultimately hate themselves. They don't care about their children. They ultimately hate their children. Deep down inside in their own psyche, they didn't really ever want to have those children. If you aren't willing to fight for yourself and the generations that come after you, don't tell me you love yourself or your children because you're a liar. You're a liar and a coward on top of it. Okay? So if you hear somebody say, I think physical revolution is going to be necessary, and you think, oh, no, it should never, ever, ever come to that. You know? Well, what do you think the founders of this country did? This is another thing, you know, people talking down this cultural Marxist bullshit about the founders somehow being bad people, you know, that comes in through the communist infiltration of America, because that's where all that crap comes from, you know, that the founders were setting up this country for slavery. I mean, please, the world was already completely enslaved, folks. This country is the only place where a modicum of freedom ever occurred because people who actually cared about freedom actually put down their oppressors for a time, for a very short time, you know, and the monarchy couldn't stand that they had egg on their face for a short amount of time. And they vowed to come in here and wipe this place off the planet through stealth, through infiltration. And that's exactly what they've done. Exactly what they've done. They followed through on their promise and they always do because they have the will and the care to get done their agenda. And yet, sadly, humanity still hasn't developed those qualities. So I I don't want to hear from people who say, Oh, that's too militant of an attitude. You know, like Samuel Adams said, if you love the tranquility of servitude more than the animating contest for freedom, then go home from us in peace. We don't we don't want your opinion. We don't want your help. And you know what? We don't need it. It's going to get done however it has to get done, folks. And you know what? You want to to test this attitude? You want to test the zeitgeist? The spirit of the times? You want to test that? Go to any American gun show. And you'll see the zeitgeist. You won't see it. You'll feel it in your bones. You'll feel it in your bones. There is at least 3% out there who aren't going to lay down and go quietly into the night, ladies and gentlemen. Bet on it. Know it like you know your name. So, I want to openly table that discussion 
It needs to be openly talked about because this government is getting more and more brazen by the day. What the communist puppet talked about yesterday on the airwaves is a disgrace. And it's all, all these false flags are being done for is to try to disarm America. And you have the absolute cowardly trash European weakling cowards who think America should be disarmed. You don't know what freedom means, boys. You don't know. You couldn't spell it. Okay? You're a bunch of domesticated dogs. And you love your domestication. And you think you're a man. You don't know the meaning of the word. Think that only government should have guns. I mean, you gotta be joking. Anybody who's not vehemently angry about that is asleep. Is asleep. And if you're not talking to these people just like that, you're asleep. They can't understand what gun ownership is for. They're asleep. The information's been out there. They're ignoring it. No, because when your government comes for your rights and freedoms physically, you know what you're going to do? You're going to crap your pants and you're going to piss in your pants like a little child. And then you're going to go in the ground because you're going to have no means of resistance. You know what? That's not happening here in America. Boys. You know, this whole European attitude, it disgusts me. Just because you're already enslaved because you gave up your firearms decades ago doesn't mean that you're going to lead us into that condition, punks. It's never going to happen here. It doesn't matter how many people get killed. It doesn't ha- matter how many children get killed. It ain't happening here. Know it. Know it. So how's that for some vitriol? Huh? How's that for some righteous indignation about what's happening here in America? Turning this country into a fascist communist regime. And that now they want to take what they laughingly call assault weapons away. Assault is a behavior, clowns. It's not a kind of weapon. A semi-automatic rifle is not an assault weapon. Assault is a type of behavior. Can a semi-automatic rifle be used for assault? Yes, it can. So can a baking pin. Okay? You know, this is a mind control tactic to try to demonize a tool that is intended to be used as a defense against government tyranny. And people still don't understand it. Go back and watch my Second Amendment presentation again. The true meaning and purpose of the Second Amendment. Look it up on my website in the video section. Look it up on YouTube. Watch it. Share it. One of my most important presentations that's out there. But you know, it's like once they've taken the man out of, you know, a physical body, it's very difficult to reinfuse the essence of a, an actual man into a male body. That's another thing I want to talk about today. You know, how emasculated this society is. And Europe is way farther along than even America. And, you know, it, it's disgusting. Uh, it's something I'm going to talk about a lot at Free Your Mind 4. This gender bending, you know, the emasculation of the American male and the masculization of the female. That's how they know once they confuse gender roles, you got a society on the road to enslavement because there ain't going to be no real women in that society and there certainly ain't going to be no real men. They're going to be weak. They're not going to resist. They're not going to know the meaning of rebellion against tyranny because they're cowards. 
And that's what you have. You have a whole society of men with no bass in their voice who wouldn't lift a finger to fight against tyranny. They're garbage. And they've been constructed that way. They've been built. They think their thoughts are their own. They think the way they are is their choice. It's a joke. You're a joke. A joke that you even believe that crap. That you you made those choices. Those choices were made for you, little boys. You think the way social engineers and dark occultists wanted you to think. According to their plan, according to their specifications, and they built you to spec. You don't even know your thoughts aren't your own. You don't even know your behaviors aren't your own. You're running a program. You're running a program that was written by people you never met and never will meet. I want to tell some anecdotes about things I've seen in society that actually have happened to me and friends of mine. That if, it, if you don't understand the depth of mind control by even hearing uh, th- these couple of anecdotes, I don't know what will explain it to you. You know, the, the, just to go back quickly, these false flags, this one in Paris, now this one in um, uh, California. I mean, it's so blatant that these are scripted events with crisis actors you know who don't even display any real emotions real grief real trauma and the news media is just constructing this whole narrative that this is oh all just because of gun owners we got to get these guns out of society and they're tugging on the heartstrings because that's what they do you know and they got people thinking with their emotions not with any logic, not with their minds, not with the logical part of the mind. You know, this neoliberal retard logic that goes like, we need to get all the guns away from private citizens. And so they'll only be in the hands of government and criminals who don't care about laws. You'll take them away from all the law abiding people, you know, who don't want to harm anybody. They'll have no ability to resist the government and the criminals who don't care about what laws get passed. But you know what? There's a segment of people who are going to be turned into criminals because they're they are good people who don't care about what laws get passed when those laws take their rights. You're not taking my rights. You're not taking one firearm I have. You're not taking one magazine I have. You're not taking one thing I have for defense away from me. Not without bloodshed. And you know what? You think I'm the only person who feels like that in America? Let me tell you something. I'm tame about it compared to some people I even know personally. Let alone probably some of the really, really vehement people out there. How they feel about this. It would make me look tame. (coughs) Very encouraging sign regarding the sentiment here in America regarding all this crap with these false flags the day after Thanksgiving on Black Friday there was 185,000 gun sales in America on one day I mean that is like a gift from God itself as far as I'm concerned You know, I mean, that's one of the only things that has put a smile on my face in the last several months. That is such a beautiful, majestic statistic that it's just like I'm ecstatic over it. Because what that shows you is there's people who are awake to what's going on and they're drawing the line in the sand. And if you want to get total enslavement done here in America... You are, just very much listen to the words that are leaving my mouth right now. Globalists, dark occultists, rogue people in government and military who are going to follow your orders to your own deaths. 
the only way, the only possible way that you're going to have of leading this particular country into total enslavement is through total war. And you better know that like you know your own name. You're not going to get it done without that. Just know that. And you want to keep trying to bring that dynamic? You're going to get war. That's what you're going to get. So, very encouraging statistic. That means that people aren't fooled by this agenda. Not here anyway. Some of them are. Some of them are retarded idiots who actually believe government cares about them and is trying to protect them. You know, like this clown, this commie clown coming on, uh, you know, network TV last night and, you know, just talking like, you know, they're, they're supposed to be our protectors. Really? You're supposed to be my protector. I don't need a protector, boy. I don't need a protector. I don't need or want a protector. I'm my protector. And ultimately, living in accordance with natural law is my ultimate protection. That's what all the protection I need in any dimension of existence, anywhere. You know, so I don't need anybody coming up and telling me, I'm going to be your protector. I'm not a punk little boy child like you. You know, I don't want a protector. I take that responsibility unto myself like every human being should. This is the problem with society. You got too many little punk boys and girls who say, I don't want that responsibility. I want to be an eternal child. I don't want to have to learn how to defend myself. I don't want to have to learn how to fight the bad guys if I have to. And therein lies the problem, ladies and gentlemen. Weak people. Weak-minded and weak-bodied people who don't want to do what's required to keep their rights, to keep their freedom. No, they want somebody else to provide that quote-unquote service for them. You know what? It's not possible. That First of all, it's not possible for you to abdicate that responsibility. It's always yours. And it's not possible for anybody else to truly protect you. That's not what these enslavers in government ever do anyway. All they do is show up after the fact. You know? Ain't, ain't one cop or soldier that I know that ever protected anybody especially cops, all they are good at doing is showing up after the fact and making things worse. You know, you want to talk about terrorism, there ain't nobody that's ever made any kind of a terroristic threat to me or um, made me feel like I was being terrorized or oppressed except police, except American police. They're the only people who have ever made me feel physically threatened in life. That's it. No terrorist organization, no terror cell, no radical religionists anywhere have ever made me personally feel threatened for my personal physical safety. The only people in life who have ever done that to me are American police. So who are the real terrorists? Who are people who inspire feelings of unease and discomfort and threat, duress, in other words? Only people who have ever done that to me in my life are American police. I ain't even worried about gangster criminal thugs and th- thieves on the street. Because at least, again, you know where they stand. They're not people who are trying to tell you they're your protector while they're trying to uh, physically harm you. You know where you stand with a common street thug criminal. The problem with government is people believe they have legitimacy in doing the violence that they do. So, I want to just get back to the degradation of consciousness in society. How bad it really is. How far gone we are. You know, all the work that people have been doing trying to explain to people about mind control, about dark occultism, about the loss of our freedoms, and what ultimate impact has it had? There are some people, a small percentage of people who are waking up and who are doing good work themselves. 
but you have this huge, huge swath of society that is just going deeper and deeper into a trance. And the, the mind control is so effectively working upon them because of their absolutely degraded emotional state. These people are literally retarded, literally retarded, which means slowed down. They're developing, it's called arrested development, intellectually, emotionally, and ultimately spiritually. They are in the state of arrested development, meaning that they never really came out of a childlike naive childlike emotional state because they're not doing any shadow work with themselves they're not trying to understand the self better they're not trying to understand the consciousness better they're not trying to do self-reflection and personal improvement this is a thing that is actually so sorely lacking it's not even sorely lacking it's actually talked about in a negative way in society now oh you want me to do personal improvement that might involve effort truth i mean i've heard people scoff at truth in the time i've been off i've heard people scoff at the term free will since i've been on this hiatus just interacting in people and with people in society i have heard people not only scoff at the term truth i've heard somebody say oh that word i mean, just imagine that scoff like eyebrows come down in a in a you know a a furrow and scoff when I said the word truth and said, Oh, that word. Like I just said a foul, dirty, filthy word. I mean, how destroyed does the spirit of a society need to be for any individual to hear the word truth and react negatively like that? How much mind control does a society have to be under? I heard someone scoff at the term free will. Oh, free will. You think that's really important. Or scoff at it as if it doesn't exist. Oh yeah, that's an illusion. I mean, this is how totally zombified brainwashed they have members of our society. It's disgusting. It's totally disgusting. It's very, very frustrating. And again, I feel more sad for these people than I do angry with them. It's like, you are that destroyed. You're that weak. You're that spiritually dead. How did you ever allow yourself, capital S self, to come into this degraded condition? It's pathetic and sad. And the problem is, folks, you know, people will say, well, why are you angry about it? The problem is because unfortunately, very unfortunately, and I don't want it to be this way, but I'm not the kind of person that says, oh, because I don't want it to be that way, I won't acknowledge how it really is. This is how most people react to things that they don't like that are actually true and real. You know, they'll try to say, oh, no, it's not that way. It's the way I want it to be. Well, I don't do that. You know, I'm not a naive person that thinks I can make reality the way I want it to be just because I don't like how it is. I fully understand how it is to a depth that most people do not understand and have seen the people who are making it like this through their willful efforts to make it like this. So, People are in the condition of thinking, I'll make make things how I want just because I'll ignore it. If it's uncomfortable in me, I'll ignore it and then it'll go away. It won't exist anymore. This solipsistic attitude. You know? I mean, they actually think this way. That's how degraded they are spiritually. That's how naive they are. There is a huge, huge push in society to emasculate men. That's another thing. There is this gigantic push to somehow make men fearful and ashamed of being a strong man 
a strong, willful man. This is what the neo-feminism agenda wants. They want men who have no will to challenge anything any woman says, regardless of how off base it is. Like truth, ugh, or free will. Why do you think that's so important? You know? And when I, t- when I tell you things that have occurred, when I'm, I'm getting ready to tell these anecdotes, you'll think that those things are like nothing in comparison with how bad it actually is. I went with my guitarist from the Founders, Mike, to a show to try to basically um, check out a club where we will potentially be playing at, maybe, you know, um, introduce ourselves and, you know, meet the people who book there and get into the venue in the near future. It's a a place in, um, in the Northern Liberties area of Philadelphia called Kung Fu Necktie. It's a rock club. And we went to a, um, we went to see a psychedelic rock band that evening. And we were, we went to the bar, we got a couple of beers, and uh, actually it was two of my guitars, it was Mike and and a DJ, and the show was over, people were starting to file out, we still had a couple of uh, beers that we were going to finish before we left, and went somewhere else, and um, we were leaning on the pool table near the rear of the club near the exit door as about as far away from the stage as you can get without leaving the building without leaving the venue and there was absolutely plenty of room everybody else was just walking by us with net with no problem we weren't blocking the way out there was a wide um through way through through thoroughfare to get out of the 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 venue uh, and get to the door. Uh, at least fifty people or so walked by us and went out the door as the show ended, while we were still you know leaning there uh, at the edge of this pool table having a beer, and not one person said a word until. A woman turns to my guitarist, Mike, and with a very angry, angry, nasty look on her face, goes almost right up to him in his space, in his personal space near his face, and says, why don't you quit manspreading? Yes, ladies and gentlemen, that word just left my mouth. And like, I had to do a triple take, like a triple take, like what, what did, I couldn't even process in my mind mentally what was just said. It was so unfathomable to me to actually hear this in a, a daily interaction with another human being. Like when I, now for people who don't understand what that term means, and again, um, she she bumped into his elbow on the way out the door as he was leaning on a pool table and accused him of what she termed as man-spreading because she bumped into him probably in her drunken condition because she looked like she wasn't altogether with it. Um, and, you know, we were absolutely fine, sober, having one beer, getting ready to go and... You know, nobody was like, you know, blocking the way. Nobody was like, you know, trying to make themselves as big as possible, like they were getting ready to fight a grizzly bear or something. Okay. We were leaning on the pool table, drinking a beer, getting ready to go. And because, you know, she bumped into him, nudged into him on the way out, she turns to him with this really angry look and practically screamed that right to his face. Now, for people who don't know what manspreading means, um, you have to 
go back to New York's subway, New York City subway signs. Uh, This comes from a man sitting with his legs open on a subway seat and therefore making it, um, you know, tight for other people to get a seat if they want to sit in the seat directly next to him because his knee is out because men aren't going to sit there with their legs crossed like a woman because they're not women. Uh, They have these things, or at least are supposed to have these things called testicles in between their legs. Uh, I realize most modern men don't have those, but, you know, uh, allegedly they're supposed to be there. And some men who still do have them uh, tend to open their legs instead of cross them on a subway car, in the small seats of a subway car. So New York has actually started fining people. New York City in America has started fining people for the horrific crime of man spreading, sitting with your legs spread open on a subway seat. I mean, this is where America has come, folks. When I first saw this, ladies and gentlemen, when I first heard this term, I actually thought it was a joke. I thought this was like a sarcastic type of, you know, uh, jab at the neo-feminist movement. I actually thought it was a joke when Barb first brought this to my attention. She said, look at what they're doing in New York. And I said, oh, that's funny. And she's like, no, 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 it's not. I'm like, yeah, that's really funny. And she's like, that's for real. I'm like, no, come on, that's that's a joke, right? And she's like, no, that's not a joke. They're they're for real. They have like signs on the subway cars there. And I was just like, you absolutely have to be kidding. I mean, with what's going on in the world today, this is what people are concerned about. Not only that, but this is what people... The, but people look at this and don't think this is a complete asinine joke. This woman takes it so seriously, she's yelling in a man's face at a rock club. At a rock club in a major city. Because she bumped into his elbow in a crowded rock club. I mean... Th- And you don't think that there's a war between men and women taking place that is socially engineered against the minds of women? I mean, this is one slave bumping into another enslaved human being and getting angry at this person and talking at them like, you know, they're the problem or the enslaver. Oh, you're you're one of the, the hierarchy of, you know, men who is oppressing us. The patriarchy. Like I said, there's no such thing, dunce. There's an occultocracy. You are living in an occultocracy, which is ruled by the occult. Ruled by stealth methods of manipulation, mind control, and epigenetics that you know nothing about because you're an unread dunce. That's where, where you live, not in a patriarchy. And let me tell you something, there's plenty of female dark occultists that I was around and worked with as well when I was involved. You think there aren't women involved in this agenda? You're out of your mind if you think that. There's people from every walk of life, every ostensible religious background, every ethnic background, every gender every class, uh, economically even. You think it's just the rich? You think it's just men? You know? Oh, people think it's just white, rich men. Yeah, sure. You want to talk about naive, you know, that believe this. They actually believe this crap. Let me tell you something. I was actually good friends with a black female Satanist for a while. So you don't think that there's every ethnicity, every gender involved in the dark occult agenda? You don't know what's going on. And you don't know who's directing it. 
because you quite frankly haven't read enough, haven't opened up your mind enough, haven't studied enough. You don't know what's going on in this world or who's directing it. And you're taking it out on somebody sitting at a rock club, having a beer, talking to friends because you accidentally bumped his elbow in your delusional state and probably drunken one too. So, uh, my guitarist did not remain, I was so dumbfounded that I actually remained silent, ladies and gentlemen, if you could believe that, uh, you know, I could not even process it. I, I was literally standing there like gape jawed for several seconds because I could not even process what just happened. I was so in it like a stupor over it that the words couldn't leave my mouth. But Immediately, my guitarist answered in a very vitriolic way, let's say. I won't repeat even on the airwaves what he said. And, you know, then you got to start thinking, you know, are there going to be uh, the White Nighters coming out to rescue the damsel in distress who just accused somebody of manspreading and being a patriarchal tyrant because uh, his elbow extended out a little too past too far past the pool table, God forbid. Um, you know, and you know, th then you have these dudes who hear a harsh uh, thing said to a woman, God forbid, who acted that way in society, and then he wants to be a big tough guy. You know, that didn't happen on this incident, but you know, uh, upon hearing what he said and the tonality that he said it, and other people turned around and heard what he said, because he said it even much louder than she said what she said to him. Uh, I was like, you know, getting ready to have to physically defend myself at that point. But that eventuality did not occur. No white knights stepped up. You know, you could look up that term if you're not familiar with it. You know, people who want to defend uh, the damsel in distress, regardless of how wrong she is. You know, I have no problem with defending people. Just make sure they're in the right first. You know, make sure they're within their rights first, then come to their defense. You know, these guys that think women can do no wrong because they're women, they, they have their head lodged firmly in their colon. Um, you know, and anybody who tries to put somebody who is acting inappropriately in their place, regardless of what gender that they are, you know, uh, you know, they want to immediately come to their rescue if they're a woman, regardless of how wrong they are. So yes, ladies and gentlemen, in my own experience, I have now heard the term manspreading viciously and vitriolically directed at a person who is just standing at a pool table with a beer. This is where society is at. This is how far the neo-feminism agenda has come. And if you're not angered by that, you're asleep. You are completely unconscious and asleep to what's really going on in our world. Because this is part of the emasculation of men. This is, you know, another term that's that's floating out there. Toxic masculinity. I guess I'm just completely poisoned because I act like an actual male member of society that doesn't want my freedom taken away and my rights taken away. And I'm prepared to physically defend those things. So I must be extraordinarily toxic. You know, any hint of anger that is expressed in the voice, that's toxic masculinity. Toxic masculinity. I mean, you know, you know who sits and comes up with this stuff? Good old Reginald over in, in the city of London at, at Tavistock. You know, our, our boy Reginald, man. You know, he's over there with Lionel, you know, and James and they're just sitting there with their cigars, looking out the window from the Tavistock building, going, wait till you see what we got for these Americans next. Man spreading, Lionel. Oh, <laughs> Reginald, that's brilliant. You know, and you don't think this is how it's going on. You know? If you understood the people that were inventing this stuff and coming up with the things that they're going to put in your mind, these fat, old white men in three-piece suits smoking expensive cigars with more money than they know what to do with, sitting there in a think tank building f saying, how are we going to rape Americans next? 
And you don't think this is all coming from Europe and particularly England and the crown and Israel and Germany and France? All of these European states is where this is all coming from. They just have, this is still their colony. They just have their little satellite here that they're running from D.C. and New York and L.A. and Hollywood, you know? And they're just, it, it's, it's just, they're running their operation remotely. I mean, it, 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 it's laughable. I mean, I have to almost poke some humor at it because it's so sad. And these people are just completely asleep to it and completely enthralled by it. Toxic masculinity, man-spreading. You're, an, you're a slave. You're enslaved. Your rights are taken. And this is how you're thinking. Trying to attack the only people that are going to be capable of defending your freedom and rights physically because you're not certainly not going to do it you know like happened in the first american revolution young men had to make sacrifice of their lives and possibly even give it all to to create the modicum of freedom that we enjoyed for a certain time a, a small amount of time and people are inventing these terms to try to make men embarrassed for being real men I mean you're slaves who love being slaves now possibly even the worst one if that's not bad enough folks yes it gets worse or at least to me, it gets worse. I mean, some people may, might think the man spreading thing is like the worst one, but I have a, a doozy for you here. Um, I was in the venue where we, the founders, my band, the founders, uh, are going to be playing this Thursday, uh, last week, to promote for the event. I brought some handbill flyers there and some stickers. Uh, to, you know, put our name out there and put the event out there uh, so that people who attend can, you know, see that we're going to be playing. So uh, I'm doing some promotion in the club, handing out some flyers, putting them on the uh, tables and the bar. And um, while I'm standing at the bar doing some promotion, um, a black woman comes up to me at the bar and says... Um, are you a racist? And I said to this African-American woman, what in God's name would make you ask me that question? Obviously, she didn't know who I was or she never would have asked that question. But I'm like, why would you think that about me? What possible impression would I give you that I'm a racist person? Did you hear me say anything to that effect? She said, what you're wearing. And I said, what I'm wearing? What are you talking about? And she said, the things that are on your shirt and your hat. And I said, and I'm, I sat, I think for a minute about, like, I, you know, had to look down for a second because I just threw on a shirt that I had laying around and went out. I had a three percenter shirt on this night. It uh, has, you know, the three um, Roman numeral and then it has two crossed um, old school Revolutionary War era black powder muskets on it. Uh, and then it had the Gadsden snake underneath that. Um, and there were no words on it. It was just those symbols. It had the three, the Gadsden snake, and then the crossed rifles. And I'm sitting there and just thinking for a second, how could she possibly interpret that as any kind of a racist symbology? Uh, could you possibly believe that black powder musket rifles, you know, are a symbolism of 
are, are symbols of racism? Could you possibly think that the Gadsden snake, a coiled rattlesnake, is a symbol of racism? When has a coil, the coiled rattlesnake ever been associated with racism? And see, this is the effective power of the mind-controlled mass media. They actually have people, ignorant people who aren't readers in society, believing that symbols like this are racist. See, if you're anti-government, you're racist. Imagine this. And then, of all things, she said, my hat. I was wearing a baseball cap, a black baseball cap with the Ben Franklin join or die logo on it. Now, for people who aren't familiar with that, the join or die symbol is the segmented rattlesnake that was used as a rallying banner during the first American revolution. And Franklin would publish this to try to get men to join the militias in newspapers and newsletters. And it meant either join together against the British or you're going to be in big trouble because you know, they're coming for your rights and possibly your life. So this was the flag that was actually the unifying banner for all the militias at the Battle of Bunker Hill, which was the first major battle of the American Revolution. The, the Franklin flag, as it was known, or the join or die flag. And this symbol of the segmented rattlesnake with the words join or die under it was on my hat. And my answer to her was, do you know what that symbol is on my hat? That's, that's how I, after the shock and awe of being called racist or being asked whether I was racist and, and saying, you know, not only am I not racist, I think racism is one of the biggest way, ways humanity is divided and conquered and ultimately enslaved to her. And she was like, oh, and I said, yeah, but not just that, you know, after I said, well, what, what made you think that? And she said, your shirt and hat. I said, well, do you even know what's on my hat? Do you know what that is or who made it? And she said, no. I said, well, first of all, why would you think it's racist if you don't know what it is? Secondly, do you know who made that? And she said, no. And I said, that was made by Benjamin Franklin, one of the founding fathers and revolutionaries of America during rev the Revolutionary War era. And I said, do you know what he did? And she said, no. And I said, he founded the first abolitionist society in America in 1775. He founded the first anti-black slavery society, an abolitionist, the Pennsylvania Abolitionist Society in right here in Philadelphia in 1775. So you're talking about the person who championed and pioneered the anti-slavery movement in the North before anybody else was talking about it as a big problem and accusing me because I'm wearing the symbol of his rallying cry for, for the American Revolution against the British who were instrumental in bringing those slaves over here to America, to the South. Not that the North wasn't involved in that at all, but... The South was obviously the people who were utilizing that slave labor force. This guy set up the first organized society to try to put that practice down. And you know what I heard from the other end of the line, folks? Crickets. Chirp, chirp, chirping away absolutely nothing to say back because she was so embarrassed at how ignorant she was that she did not know any of this part of our own history. These are the kind of golems you have walking through society on a day-to-day -day basis.
And it's not getting any better. Because these people's minds are owned. They're owned by the media. They're owned by the government. They're most of all owned by the social engineers. They don't even understand how their minds are socially engineered at all or who's doing it. They're reveling in their ignorance because, oh, this is my time to get back at the white man. You know, the white man is becoming the new cultural enemy. And this is what these social engineers are trying to foment. The war between men and women in particular and between the races as well. Between black and white. And they're succeeding. They're getting it done. I'm seeing evidence of it all over the place when I go out into society. It's like if you're a white man, you're being treated like you're the enemy. We are not the enemy because I'm a man and because I'm white and because I act like a man. I'm not your enemy. As a matter of fact, I'm one of the people fighting for human rights more than anybody else is. And you know, this is why I need a break from this sometimes, folks, because this is what I see on a day-to-day basis and it starts to wear thin on you. It starts to wear you out. To see this is disgusting. It saps your energy. It saps your strength. It saps your will to continue to go on. Not that I'm going to stop because I'm going to keep going. But people need to know how bad it is so we can get to work on this. We need to get to work on this and you cannot remain silent about these issues. They have to be discussed in the forefront. How there's a war on men. How there's a war on white men in particular as well. You know, this isn't a race issue. I'm trying to explain how the divide and conquer tactic is progressing in society. And people are still falling for it. You know, how many people think that, oh, it's it's all white people are the problem? You know, because why? Because most white people in government are doing oppression to people of minority, minority, uh, you know, races. Of course they are. There is real racism happening there. That doesn't mean all white people are supportive of that. You know, I mean, I mean, these people have to be more discriminatory in their understanding, you know? Yeah. I mean, they have to be, they have to discriminate in the right way and realize they're, it's not about white versus black. It's not about any race versus any race or men versus women. It's about government versus the people. It's about tyranny versus freedom. That's it. That's the only war going on. And people have to understand that we're already actively in a war. I talked about this on um, a rec- in a recent interview on Veritas Radio. We're already actively in a war, folks. Thousands of people, over 5,000 people have been murdered since 9-11 without any trial by American police in America. I mean, the Nazis couldn't have done anything that successfully with the silent consent of the people. Being accused of being racist for wearing a for wearing Ben Franklin iconography. I mean, you have to be kidding. And again, this has to do with this absolute bullshit garbage, you know, with the the rebel flag being uh, removed from our culture because it's, so, it's allegedly racist when it wasn't about racism. It was about the right to secede from the union and not be enslaved as states of a federal government. But now anything associated with that, see, she saw the crossed rifles and associated that with that elongated X of the rebel flag, you know? So, you know, then probably associated the snake with the tea party who she sees as, oh, they're rich white men who don't want their money taken away and they support the corporations. So that's the bad guy because they don't want socialism in America. You know, they don't want the radical redistribution of wealth out of the hands of the people who have actually contributed to society through doing, you know, uh, building businesses, etc. 
God forbid we have a voluntary society. You know what? I'm not a rabid commun. Uh, I'm not a rabid um, capitalist either, folks. You know, I'm not for communism and socialism, but I'm not a rabid capitalist either. I've talked about money as a form of mind control and how people get attached to it as a religion. But you know what? Going back, going to real capitalism versus the crony form of capitalism we have now would be a great stopgap compared to moving into socialism and communism the way we're headed. Just like having a constitutional republic would certainly be a better uh, way of being than moving into a form of totalitarianism than, than we are. Obviously, we have to go to total a total anarchist society where there's no masters and slaves and no perceived you know, uh, legitimacy to violence and coercion in the form of government. And we have to go to a society where people in consciousness have come to a, such a level of consciousness that they see each other as they would see themselves and don't need monetary systems and move to a true gift economy. You know, we're so far away from that, those levels of consciousness that it's, it's laughable. Those have always been my positions, you know, but are there stopgap measures to that? Hey, would I love to go to the form of government that um, uh, the founders envisioned compared to what we have now? Yeah, it would be like heavenly in comparison to what we have now. Is that the end of it? No, it's got to go further than that. It's got to go to total anarchy, meaning there is no government because there's no people who are masters and none who are slaves and there's no subjects and there's, you know, there's only natural law that is always in effect and people understand what natural law is and they know the difference between right and wrong and they respect that, those boundary conditions. That's it. You know, same thing with the monetary system compared to the fractional reserve, uh, absolute crony capitalism of fiat currency and uh, absolute nonsense in the form of derivatives and, you know, bank fraud that we have now. Would, would it be like heavenly to go to a, uh, a monetary system that was based in true voluntary capitalism? It'd be like heaven in comparison to what we have now. Is that the end of it? No, it would have to be pushed farther than that. You know, and move to a point where we don't need these, these uh, chits of exchange to actually accomplish what we want to accomplish in society. People still can't envision how that could ever work or be done because they're under mind control. You know, I tell people it's like, you know, a family. Would, would, a, would a family of a, a mother, father, and two children develop a monetary system or would they just do, do things for each other that they could because they know, recognize that they're they recognize that they're all in the same situation together and they would help each other as a family unit, a family dynamic. Until humanity forms that kind of consciousness that we are all one family sharing a, a, a similar experience here on earth and we don't need to compete with each other and have these systems of exchange and ultimately um, uh, uh, complete imbalance where one person can ha have it all and one person can have so little, then, you know, nothing's ultimately going to really change for the better in the long term because these are all ultimately systems of control. Any form of government and money are systems of control. I've talked about that from day one. It's always been my position. It's going to always be my position. I think that's the position of someone who's really fully awake and, you know, and there's still many people who hold on to one or both of those religions, authority and money. But, you know, that's what we're trying to break down. Those are the religions that the great work is all about breaking down, folks. So, you know, I think that uh, explaining these incidents, explaining my take on where society is headed, um, talking about what I've been up to, especially uh, musically and with the conference, uh, I think that's a good place probably to leave it for now. Just uh, I'll briefly mention what I'm going to be up to over the next, uh, you know, several weeks to months. Um, uh, I'll be releasing the uh, video of my Tesla presentation shortly. Uh, I'm not going to give an exact date, but hopefully over the next uh, few days to a week. Uh, it's called The Dark Side of Tesla's Technology, and it's about um, action at a distance weaponry or scalar weaponry. Uh, I gave this presentation back in July at the uh, Tesla conference here in Philadelphia. It went really well. It was received very well. And um, uh, I hope to get the video out very shortly. 
Uh, I'll also be doing some upcoming live presentations. I don't have exact dates on those, but uh, they'll be here in Philadelphia and the surrounding area. I've not stopped doing live events. Um, Also probably going to be working with some people to do some presentations out of the area shortly. Nothing confirmed there yet, but um, keep a... Stay tuned to the website and the um, uh, radio show for that. Um, Some of the topics I'll be talking about in those presentations, uh, I've wanted to do a a, a presentation uniquely on Satanism and how it works, how it's structured, its uh, ideology, to really clarify that because there's still people who don't understand what Satanism really is. They still believe in the Hollywood variant of it and... uh, I want to do a full-length presentation to clarify that, especially since in my Demystifying the Occult presentation, I only very, very briefly touched on dark occultism. I want to go very in-depth on Satanism in particular. Um, I'll also be uh, probably doing a presentation soon, if not uh, in a live presentation, certainly here on this radio show in the future, on the occult origins of Nazism, which is something I've wanted to cover for a while. Um, so I think that's a really good place to uh, leave it for today. And, uh, again, I, as I said at the beginning, I'm going to attempt to do a new podcast once a week. Don't hold me rigidly to that schedule, but that is my goal. Um, and, um, uh, you know, hopefully, uh, I can stick to that schedule of at least putting out, uh, a new podcast on a weekly basis. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for listening to this uh, new edition and new format of What on Earth is Happening. Uh, I'm your host, Mark Passio. My website is whatonearthishappening.com, and I will see you here uh, on this podcast uh, in the very near future. Thanks so much, and have a great day.